What's up you guys? Welcome back to the vlog channel. So today I'm just gonna do my makeup and talk to you guys. I am filming on my phone, which is a first kind of. Uh, usually when I film for YouTube, I film on my cameras, but I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like breaking out all the YouTube equipment and then putting the, the video on my computer and editing for like a thousand years. So I'm just gonna use my phone because I can film in 4K now on my phone. And I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Currently, let me just get all this crap ready. Uh, I am long overdue for a run to Ulta. I've got to get a bunch of stuff because I have been on a makeup no buy for over a year. Because I just got out of hand. I was buying every product that every fucking YouTuber and TikToker told me to buy. Uh, and yeah, it just, it got crazy. I have so much eyeshadow because I'm like, ooh, pretty bitch what I've been like bronzer in the crease for like a long time so I don't even use any of that stuff anymore <sighs> okay so I'm gonna mix this shit with this shit and it's gonna be great anyway how y'all doing I hope everyone is having a great day I hope your 2024 has started off really well um, ours definitely has I'm going to throw some Smashbox in there too. I'm just going to make, I'm just going to make my own foundation. I just hope for the best. My mirror has like a bunch of different settings. Her here actually got me this mirror. I love it so much. I'll have to show it to you guys in a second. Um, so this video is going to be like a get ready with me life update. And I tried to do this live the other day. If y'all saw it, um, it just, it didn't go well in my mind. Um, you know, live streams are just kind of difficult because you never know what the comments are going to be. And, you know, sometimes it can just get out of hand with people. You know, you see the comments, you get distracted. You're trying to talk to people. Um, and live streams are just really unpredictable. So that probably wasn't the best way to, uh, to do a life update. I have to blend this out kind of fast because one of these is super matte. The NARS one is matte and like once it like dries, you're fucked. So, you know. Um, yeah, so life update number one. I'm going to Ulta today probably. <laughs> life update number two, we are moving and I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to get out of the state of Illinois. Um, there's just a lot of, you know, I gotta shove it up my nose. Hold on. <laughs> there's a lot of bad memories here and you know, it is what it is, but also I don't have any family, any friends, no support in the state of Illinois, neither do the kids, um, neither does Burner, he doesn't know anybody here. And um, so we are just super excited for a fresh start in a new place. And I, you know, I couldn't be happier. I know that I just bought this house a year ago, um, but honestly, that was kind of just a knee jerk reaction to the fact that I'm a felon and I thought not need it wasn't a knee-jerk reaction when I bought this house I thought my ex would still be living in the state of Illinois I didn't think he was going to sell our old house and then go to Arkansas um so I bought this house fully thinking that we we're going to co-parent and the kids would stay in the same area you know as their dad so when he left it was like oh, I bought this house six months ago at the time and now you're just gone like and I'm I feel like I'm stuck here now and you know the kids are even further away from their dad and you know it's just been kind of a messy situation but the whole reason I bought this house to begin with is because my kid's dad what it you know used to live 20 minutes away and now he lives 12 hours away so one of the cha I keep looking at myself because I'm filming on the phone and I'm like look at the freaking camera <laughs> um one of the challenges with moving was that I am in family court and I've been in family court over a year because whenever my ex took me to family court um which he repeatedly says that it's my fault we're in family court but the only thing that I did was get an order of protection because he was acting fucking crazy um and then he hired a family court lawyer and we transferred the order of protection into a parenting case which was unnecessary um in my opinion and family court is just such a waste of time and money if you're in family court, I feel for you. I'm sorry. Um, family court 
it's a completely separate entity from what I went through in terms of domestic violence. I got an order of protection. We changed it and amended it and, you know, whatever, a bunch of different times. He asked me to drop it all together so that he could have parenting time. I did that, um, you know, just hoping that things would get better. So I'm saying all of this to say that if you've gone through something similar and you think family court is going to be like your moment, like you're going to be able to tell a judge this person was abusive to me or this person isn't safe to be around the kids, we need supervision, da da da. You have to understand that while that is so valid, family court only cares about two things. What is in the best interest of the kid? And can these two adults get along for the kid? That's it. Yeah, there's a lot of distractions along the way, a lot of, you know, ups and downs, but um, those are like the two core things. Can these adults get along? And what's, what is in the best interest of the kid? So the abuse that I endured doesn't matter in that court setting, in family court. It's a completely separate entity. And that might be why my ex was so insistent and like pushed us into family court so that we no longer talked about what he did to me. We only talked about the kids. Um, that might be why he wanted me to agree to drop the order of protection. And as soon as I did that, you know, he had a family court lawyer do that and as soon as I did that, I'm like, I don't even know why I did that. This isn't getting better. It's actually just getting more complicated and costing a ton of money. So um, one of the hangups with the move was that we have to agree um, that this is what is in a kid's best interest, which means that I had to get my ex to agree moving out of state was a good idea. And luckily he did. He did sign a motion for relocation. Um, but I, you know, I had to come, I had to come correct with this is the school district rating in my district currently. This is the school district rating in the new district. Um, this is what the neighborhood looks like. This is the crime rate in the city, which is much lower than the crime rate in my current city. You know, so I just had to like be prepared with all of that stuff. If you're thinking, oh my God, that's not fair. that You have to get permission from your ex to move, even though he moved. I know. I feel ya. Um, it's because I have the kids and he doesn't. So that's why I had to get permission. But it really just, this whole system, this whole process has just been very re-traumatizing to me because being in a courtroom setting is traumatizing. When we're talking about my kids, it's even harder for me because family court is difficult. Um, I could get sentenced to prison without shedding a tear. If I'm in a courtroom talking about my kids, it's hard. It's just very different thing so it's just been really emotional for me as you guys can imagine um the kids don't really know a lot about the family court stuff just that we are trying to figure out what's best for everyone and we're trying to come to an agreement about it but i did tell them that their dad and i agree that moving out of state is what's best and i'm like this is like kind of like the first thing we've agreed to and like Ever, which is amazing and both of the girls were like yay <laughs> so glad you guys agree on this um they are a little nervous for the move which is totally understandable I'm nervous for the move um it's it's a huge move and we're moving hella far away so you know it's expensive we have a lot of shit it's you know it's just a lot to be completely honest, I've never felt better about a decision though. I'm so excited to start over. Um, the house I found is beautiful and you know, the neighborhood is beautiful and I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. Um, where I live right now, we don't really have a backyard that the kids can play in. I don't feel safe here. Um, the, the neighborhood's not the best. The school district's not that great. We're by a hospital, it's loud as shit. Um, there's not a lot of things to do, in my opinion. Just the same, like, boring stuff. Like, we could go bowling, a trampoline park. There's just really not that much to do here. And, like, there's a lot of really cool things that we can do where we're moving. And I'm excited. And I can't wait to, you know, bring you guys with me. I'm going to film a bunch of vlogs, um, moving vlogs, which, oh my god. We just, we just, you know, if it doesn't match, we just... It's fine. Um, but yeah, we're going to film a bunch of moving vlogs and I'm already tired, if I'm being honest. I'm already tired because I know that this move is like 
you know, I've been packing for what feels like forever and I have realized we have way too much shit and we need to downsize because I don't even, where did all this shit come from? I didn't put bronzer on underneath my foundation, did I? I usually do that. I totally forgot just now. I do that because like, I feel like putting, I put bronzer over top too, but like, I like to put like the wet bronzer, not that this matters. Um, cream, not wet. I like to put cream bronzer underneath and then put foundation because I feel like when I'm putting on cream bronzer, I'm like, you know, and I don't like that over top of my foundation. This is like literally all the makeup I do. Oh, and then highlight. So I've just been doing like this same makeup routine for like a thousand years. Okay, what else? What else? Um, we just got back from LA. I'm sure you guys saw all of all of that. I've been posting tons of pictures on my Instagram. We were only there for a couple of days, but Burner filmed with Vice TV and that's gonna come out soon, I hope. It, he did such a good job, like literally amazing job. I was just a stage mom, which is a nice change of pace, <laughs> you know? Uh, so yeah, I, I'm really proud of him and I can't wait for you guys to see the interview. Yeah, this is like literally, this is the look. Okay, what else, what else? Um, Mama Kent is doing good. She is cancer free, which is amazing. I don't know how she made, made it through all those treatments. Um, she still has some, some like post chemo and radiation treatments to do. I forget what they're called. Uh, but yeah, she's done with all of that, which is amazing. And I remember like her calling me when she first got the news and she's like, I don't wanna do chemo and radiation. I just don't think I could do it. And I'm like, I, want you to but it's your decision and I'm so glad that she decided to go through with that because as hard as it was now she's cancer free and I'm so relieved you guys um she came here a while back like six months ago or so and we filmed but I can't find the SD card which is ridiculous and I'm so mad at myself but I have ADHD like you would not believe so after we got done filming I probably just put the card the SD card from the camera in my pocket uh, and maybe I washed it or something, but I can't find it and that sucks. So we're going to have to redo it once we get to the new place. So yeah. What else? What else? Uh, next week I'm going to be on the podcast Chasing Heroin and she is going to interview me about my story and I'm excited. I'm excited to get back into like the rhythm of going on work trips and taking interviews because it's been like two years since I did that. Um, I haven't been more than 30 minutes away from my kids in two years. I've said no to every work trip, every interview for a long time. And I'm like, what if people stop asking me? <laughs> you know, what if people um, just don't want to interview me at a certain point? Um, but I just, I, you know, I was battling a lot of things and I'm finally just like getting back into the swing of things. And, you know, as hard as creating content is for me right now, this is still my passion and it's still what I love to do. So I have days, like I'm not even gonna lie to you, I have days like today where I'm like, I just don't want to. I don't want to. It's hard to like get myself into that mindset of being excited to film and I wanna get back to that because I genuinely love creating content. Um, I think I'm going to be doing some reacting videos, like reacting to my old content, reacting to certain shows. Um, I know that we have um, prison, like locked up around the world, that series I used to do. Um, I would love to do that again. I'm not sure how to react to shows like 60 Days In um, or Born Behind Bars because I tried to do Born Behind Bars and they copyright claimed me. So I'm like, how do I do that? I'll have to call Larry and ask because he does it all the time. I think that's pretty much it for the updates. Um, I did get a tattoo when I was in LA and it's on my Patreon. Burner also got a tattoo from a gumball machine uh, and that's on his Patreon too because it's inappropriate to post anywhere else. We we walked into this tattoo shop and he saw this like machine or whatever and on it it said XXX tattoos for 150. So you just put like a quarter in there, 50 cents in there and get a gumball. And every single gumball has a different tattoo design, but it's kind of like, it's not appropriate. I can't even explain it to you. You're just gonna have to go to his Patreon. I'll link, I'll link it that below. But it was just such a fun experience to go to LA and 
explore with him and see him film with Vice and do all the things that we did. I had an amazing time. I might go back to LA next month. Uh, Jubilee reached out to me and they wanted me to be part of something that they're working on. I just don't know if the timeline will work out with our move. So I might film with Jubilee again next month in LA. Um, but I, like I said, I'm not really sure if I can make it work with everything that I have going on. I'm going to have to find a new hair dresser because I'm leaving Teresa. It makes me very sad. Uh, she's been my hairdresser for like three years now, two, three years. And finally, when she gets me to do some kind of color in my hair, because she's been trying to dye my hair forever, um, finally, she gets me to do this. And I'm like, by the way, I'm leaving state. And I, I want to never come back here. <laughs> um, you know, which that that checks out, honestly. Okay, last update. The girls are doing really good. Um, they are about to be 12. Mm hmm the audacity. And eight, 12 and eight. That's how fast time is going by. That's how fast they're growing. So yeah, Mike is gonna be 12 and Riley's gonna be eight this year. I know that a lot of people are commenting things um, like to get burner away from them or to not move because uh, the kids need stability. The kids also need a well-rounded life. And, you know, they also need family and friends and a support system, you know, and they just don't have that in Illinois. And we're just not happy and the school district sucks. And I know that they'll have a better life there. Um, and, you know, I, I want to say to all of you guys watching, if you've made it this far in the video, that my constructive criticism for you guys watching me would just be to trust me. Trust me. Trust that I know what I'm doing. Trust that I know how to make the best decisions for me, my kids, and my life. Trust me. I think the comments are so unfair that say that, you know, I, I'm i making bad decisions or I don't know how to make good decisions for my kids. Have I made mistakes? Yes. But to have, you know, hundreds of comments a day telling me that I don't know how to make good decisions or I don't know what's in my own children's best interest um, or someone needs to take my kids away, just all kinds of craziness. Hearing those comments, it's the same way I was just treated in family court. To predate family court, I was treated like that in my relationship with their dad forever, that I was incapable of, of making decisions on my own, that I was incapable of uh, paying bills or just doing all these little things. So for people to tell me that I am incapable of making decisions for my life, that is the same kind of energy that my abuser gave me and it sucks, you know? So please just trust that I know what is best for me and I know what's best for my girls because I do. As far as their relationship with their dad, you know, we're I'm doing my best. It's me, 365, 24 seven. He hasn't called in over a month and hasn't seen them in over three months. And that's his decision. So we just have to, you know, not get hung up on that and not focus on that. You know, life is too short. We're definitely not going to sit around and wait. You know, we're going to go live our best life. And I'm excited to take you guys with me on this journey because I've needed a fresh start. My kids have needed a fresh start for a really long time. And I can't wait. All right. As always, thank you all for your love and support on the vlog channel. And I'll see you in my next one, which hopefully will be very soon. Packing and cooking and then crying about packing and cooking. <laughs> I love y'all.